We're following a team of scientists on a full day cruise. As we board the Fulmar research boat, we have no idea what's in store for us. Their voices and movements as they load their gear and belongings are surprisingly quiet. I think it's partly because it's early, but it also speaks to the seriousness of this mission. They're looking for ways to stop the killing of whales. So, uh, I'm Rayon, this is Brian, we're going to be your crew for the day. The spell of the morning calm is broken by a speed test. The crew tells me and my colleagues that if we intend to join them today, we have to get completely inside these survival suits in less than two minutes. There are three journalists from NBC Bay Area joining the researchers today. Photographers Mark Villarreal and Michael Horn, and me, Robert Campos. I'm the producer. I didn't quite ace the test, but I think my photographer, Mark, did well enough for both of us. It's just after 7 a.m. Let's have a great day. Yeah, let's get some science done. 63 degrees and sunny as we leave the Sausalito docks and motor out of San Francisco Bay. I'm the bus driver. <laughs> We're entering a critical area. Whales come here from thousands of miles away, Hawaii, Mexico, and Costa Rica, to feed each spring. And when there's one whale, there's probably two, so I'm just going to slow down a little bit. Blue whales, the largest animals on Earth, are swimming in these waters. They can grow more than 100 feet long and weigh as much as 30 elephants. Humpbacks, almost as big, can launch their entire bodies out of the water. But humpbacks are best known for their musical talents. One whale will create a song that can last more than half an hour. It's then repeated exactly by all the other male humpbacks throughout the region. The songs are a mystery, but scientists believe they have something to do with mating. As massive as they are, whales are dwarfed by another ocean giant, the container ship. They can be up to a quarter mile long, and when fully loaded, can weigh more than half a billion pounds. The area near San Francisco Bay has some of the busiest shipping lanes on the west coast. Every year, thousands of enormous ships churn through here, striking and killing an estimated 80 whales. Whales are so heavy that once they're on land, their own weight can crush and kill them. As we get further out to sea, the wind is gusting, and the water is so choppy, it's hard to walk a straight line. About four hours into the trip, half the people on board are looking green, including me. The waves become so intense that I find myself wondering what would happen if I tumbled off the back of the boat into the water. With all the engine noise and activity, would anyone notice? I'm pretty sure they would, but from now on I make a point of letting my colleagues know where I am. Doing detailed scientific work under these conditions is like a wrestling match. Everything has to be strapped down. Over several days, the boat follows straight lines that stretch about 40 miles into the ocean. The scientists collect data on water conditions and all living things in the area to create an accurate portrait of who is eating whom. Called a tucker trawler, this net collects tiny fish known as krill at different depths in the water. We use that data we collect during these cruises to develop models that we use to put together maps that show where the whales concentrate. By knowing those places, we can protect them. Whales survive mostly on these little creatures, eating up to 40 million of them in a single day. This is krill, this is whale food. The scientists will use the data they gather to direct shipping companies away from whale feeding areas and persuade them to cut down on whale deaths by slowing down their ships. Dr. Karina Fish gathers seawater samples and then uses a toxic chemical, mercuric chloride, to keep the sample stable until she can test it in the lab. All right, visual survey will begin shortly. Visual survey, get ready. Rudy Wallen is an expert bird spotter. Uh, Sabine Skull 1, Zone 1, flying 200. Zero, zero. It's a hatch here. Truth be told, we brought our cameras out here in the hope of filming whales. But eight hours zone into the trip, one, they're elusive. We begin to see whale spouts, but they're far away. Just as the work is ending and we're motoring back home, a big commotion erupts on the water. Oh my God. A huge ball of bait fish is spinning near the boat. Sea lions are feeding. Birds are feeding too. About five whales swim so close to the boat, we can hear them breathing.
I can't decide whether to take pictures with my phone or just enjoy the sight. Then Mark gets hit in the face with a blast of whale breath. He said later that it was nasty, but then again, he's not a fan of seafood. The whales slowly move away. I can't help thinking that they somehow knew how much we needed to see them, and they put on a show.